we will be covering the three eras, 1960s, 1980s and 2000s. This video will see the ever-changing evolution of sport and how it has developed over the past five to six decades. The video will be going over the government and its changes, key policies and key milestones that have happened throughout these eras. Over the last 60 years there has been a constant change in the development of sport, which has seen government shift focus from very little to no interest in sport, by only viewing it as a hobby, to sport becoming a main government focus with its own dep uh, government departments. So, the government in 1960s was a Conservative Party from 1960 to 1964. The Prime Minister was Harold Macmillan from 1957 until 1963, then he was overtaken by Sir Alec Douglas Hull from 1963 till 1964. Uh, the Conservative Party in this period ignored the wolf in the report, although in 1962 they made Lord Hallisham the Minister with special responsibility for sport to try and encourage it in a way, but they still didn't approve the Wolfenden report at this time. So uh, this proved that the Conservative Party was reluctant, reluctant to the suggestion of PE. Between 1964 and 1970, the Government Party changed, which became the Labour Party. Um, Harry Bilson, which was the new Prime Minister, uh, straight away approved the Wolfenden report, and the Labour Party all of a sudden became interested in sport all over again. So they formed the Umbrella Organisation, which became the Advisory Sports Council. Under the Conservative Party, the welfare state was more about housing and not about sport. And in, and in 1964, when the Labour Party did come in, Wilson started to change, and all of a sudden, welfare state was more looking into sport. In the 1960s, the key policy that was produced was the Wolfenden Report. In this period, there was only one key document there. The Wolfenden Report it was proposed to the Conservative Party in 1957, although they ignored this proposal. This was when they made um, Lord Hallisham, who was a minister, the special minister in power of sport. In 1964, when the Labour Party came into power, they decided to accept the idea of forming an umbrella organisation. They did so, and it became named the Advisory Sports Council, also known as the ASC. The aim of the Advisory Sports Council was to advise the government on matters related to the development of amateur sport and physical recreation. The ASC was there to provide advice where standards of provision for sports facilities and for the community, coordination of the use of community resources, it was also to develop training and coaching and prioritise this in sports development. This sent sport in a more professional and serious direction and was vital in the change of how people viewed sport. The council was only advisory although this was because the government at this time still did not see sport as a major government concern. The Wolfenden Report was published in 1960 and it was called Sport in the Community. This report wanted young, gifted people to have the opportunity to participate, therefore over, overall increasing participation rates. The report focused on both boys and girls and targeted people leaving school. This was because at this age people were participating in sport and as it got to leaving school, this time, participa participation rates dropped as people were going to work and would no longer be playing sport. The reason, another reason that they targeted young people was because they believed that the younger generation had, more, had a better opportunity to develop skills that they had. Right, so during this uh, Wolfram report as well, um, the, the reason why they decided to form this is because it, um, they needed a new initiative um, in order to expand sport. So because uh, the Labour Party wanted uh, higher particip participation levels, um, they needed something to push this and get people involved in it. Um, like I said before, uh, although it does focus on the talented and gifted side, um, it also focuses on enjoyment rather than um, create professionals. Um, so getting people involved again, which again improves the participation levels. Uh, the aim for this was to improve the welfare of the community. Um, so getting people together, um, improving the cohesion, So, uh, after the Labour Party was in power, Margaret Thatcher took over from 1979 until 1990. And uh, Margaret had little connection with sport. She didn't really believe in it. She didn't put emphasis into it or anything like that. 
and uh, people that worked for her in the Conservative Party was a person called John Major and also a person called David Meller. And they also said, even though they were working with her, that she had no connection to sport, especially football, due to hooliganism. I mean, hooliganism, around the 80s, was very serious, it was like a crime, what wasn't dealt with properly. So she tried using sport to make sure that hooliganism would be reduced. And the way she tried to do this was in the 1980 Olympics, she tried to boycott it, so none of, her, none of our athletes went. So what that meant was there'd be no British competed in the 1980 Olympics, which obviously England was fuming about. And uh, there was a person who competed, Rowan, called Colin Moynihan, who won a medal at the 1980 Olympics, and then he became a minister for sport in the near future. So linking in with that, with um, Colin Moynihan, um, becoming the first minister of sport in 1980, uh, there was very few ministers and senior politicians who had anything to do with sport um, in that area. And the Department of Education um, quoted saying that the greatest single need for sport is improving the facilities, pictures, equipment, getting everything, get, getting all that sorted, um, so it improves the participation levels in sport. Um, they also had a factor as well, the Conservative governments, they want to reduce the welfare state um, to give the public, make the public become more independent. Um, and also, at the Department of Education, in 84 and 85, um, the amount of funding they had was only 26.1 million. Um, three, two or three years later, it rose to 349 million. That shows how much the Conservatives are putting back into the education um, and getting sport on that national curriculum. Um, along with that as well, there was a lot more supporting grants um, for education, so schools could put it for grants to get, get the facilities and everything that they need upgraded so it improves the participation levels. In 1981, they created a policy called Sport in the Community and they aimed in the next 10 years to have 400, 460 major sports halls in the UK and they also aimed to have 310 smaller sports halls also in the UK. Um, they also came up with that they wanted to increase indoor activity and outdoor activities with men with 15% indoor and out with women they wanted to have 70% and 35% outdoor also in the next five years they wanted to in uh, increase sports halls by by 800 well, build 800 uh, they wanted to have 50 to 200 refurbished swimming pools in the UK also to have 3,000 new upgraded pictures so in schools etc. They had three key areas, they just wanted participation in the primary sector and two secondary to improve facilities and, and just like in the Wolfland report to improve excellence. So in the 1980s one of the other key policies was Sport for All. Sport for All's primary aim was to get 1.7 million men and 3.9 million women participate in sport. They aimed for two major target groups. They aimed for 13 to 24 year olds and 45 to 59 year olds. The reason they aimed for 13 to 24 year olds was because this was the age that people were leaving school and were going into full time work. So people that were initially participating in sport while they were in education, for example after school clubs and representing their school, no longer were participating. So if they could increase this, then obviously it would increase the overall participation there. 45 to 59 year olds, this age group was targeted because at this age people were retiring from work and were, were becoming slightly older so at this age you want to increase the overall participation rate. Again, not only does it increase rate but it means that old, older people are becoming fitter, healthier and happier. That links in with the Wolfenden report because again it's improving welfare, welfare throughout the community. They also had the Action Sports Scheme. This scheme was to try and get unemployed people participating in sport. Again, it improves welfare in the community and links in with the Wolfenden report. So does international success. They focused uh, again on gifted and young people. If they could do this and they could maintain participation and increase their skill levels, then there's a chance that they'll go on and play at a professional level, maybe at, at an elite level, maybe participate at, on an international scale, representing countries and playing, playing nationally. 
which once again links in with the Wolfen report. In the 2000s, there were four different governments. Between 1997 and 2007, and between 2007 and 2010, the Labour were in charge, which were Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. And they believed that sport should be driven into young people at a young age. And also, the Labour had the biggest involvement in sport because they created four policies in this time. Between 2010 and 2015, the coalition, David Cameron and Nick Clegg, came in power. And they created two policies in these five years they were in charge. Uh, between 2015 and present, the Conservatives, David Cameron and now Theresa May, wanted to bring back competitiveness back into school sport. So during this time, um, there was many government roles. There was the Department of Education, Department of Health, um, Department of Culture, Media and Sport. Um, the Department of Education links with the common services. Uh, so when they were in charge, Michael Gove was the Education Secretary um, in the 2000s. He made the focus of school port and um, national curriculum. The reason why was because uh, Cameron and Clegg wanted to bring back competitive, competitiveness in, back in school sport. Um, they spent 80 million on sport premium um, and they put 150 million into school sport. Um, each school, each primary school, which had about 250 pupils in, all received um, 9,250 as their budget. Um, so, whatever they want to spend that on, they could. The uh, Department of Health uh, was all about changing the fitness and everything of young children and people in Britain. They spent 6.4 million on Change for Life. Uh, they again backed the sports premium with 60 million um, and then they, they ejected 5.1 million in, in cash um, to help improve fitness. 1.1 million, which is Play England, um, another, three point, uh, another 3 million for Change for Life, um, and another 1 million for Walk Initiatives. Uh, the final one was the departure of culture, media, and sport. They again uh, back the sport premium by giving them 10 million a year, um, but they also wanted to impact on their own policy. Uh, which was a sporting habit. And with that one, uh, they invested a billion, uh, one billion, um, and all that money. Um, so that one is, is all about improving the school facilities. That one uh, is all about improving facilities outside of school. So that's sports halls, uh, 3G astroturfers, pitches, swimming pools. And this one is all about the health and fitness, so that gyms, uh, 24 hour gyms that you can go to if you've got time for work. Everything, it all links into the participation of people in Britain. In the 2000s, there was six policies that have currently been made up to date. And they are the Sporting Future for All, which was made in the 2000s, the Game Plan, which was made in 2002, PESSCL, which stands for Physical Education, School Sports and Club Links, PESSYP, which stands for Physical Education, School Sports and Young People. There was also a Creator Sport, Sporting Habit for Life in 2012 and a Sporting Future, a new strategy for an active nation. So, to go back to the Sporting Future for All, the main aim was to give every single person a chance to participate. It doesn't matter where you're from in the country, it doesn't matter how old you are, they believe everyone should have a chance to participate. And uh, the way that they planned to achieve this was through the schooling system. They believed that if they target people at a young age from five years and upwards, that then they might carry it on through the rest of their life if they find a sport that they love. So to move on to the game plan, uh, the, the plan were a bit same, but the game plan mainly focuses on disadvantaged groups. So uh, an idea of a disadvantaged group could be overweight or disabled. So the way that they wanted to achieve this was by hosting mega sporting events for the disadvantaged. So let's say disabilities, for example, they might create a, a mega sporting event just for wheelchair basketball, let's say. So all the wheelchair basketballers in the country can all come and they can all compete against each other to raise awareness for the sport and allow people who wouldn't usually have the opportunity to participate to participate. So if we move on to physical education, school sports and club links, which were made in 2003, what these did, they aimed to increase opportunities for children aged 5 to 16 years old. So it's quite a wide range. And the target was to hit 85% of 5 to 16 year olds. So 
So it's a, quite a vast amount to be focusing on. And uh, the way that they plan to do this was by uh, developing PE teachers. So because everyone aged 5 to 16 is still in school, what they wanted to do was make PE teachers as good as it could possibly be so that they have the right start to an healthy life and uh, they can progress through school and if they want to carry on after, after they've left the age of 16, they have the opportunity to do so because they've created club links. For example, it's like if I left school and joined the Royston Dynamos after so I could carry on my footballing career. So if I move on again to uh, physical education, school sports and young people, what they uh, basically did was the same as the previous one, apart from because they achieved what they wanted to achieve, they strived and made themselves a bigger boundary. So what they planned to do was create it so they had three hours of PE per week in every single school. So it's a good amount of physical activity for uh, children to be having. And they also plan to move it to five to 19 year olds. So that after they've left the club, uh, after they've left school, can carry on with the club links and progress it even further. So uh, the way they plan to achieve this for increasing leadership opportunities, so people can stand up and be the best that they can possibly be, and uh, by improving the links that they've already made between clubs and schools. So the four policies that Oliver have just talked about were all done through uh, the Labour Party, and the coalition were then in power and the first policy that they brought in was creating a sporting habit for life which was introduced in 2012. The aim of this policy was to build a long lasting legacy with the Olympics. It targeted 14 to 25 year olds. In order to achieve this, uh, this long lasting legacy with the Olympics, they wanted to improve links between, school, between schools and between clubs. So they would get the Youth Sport Trust to come in and, and they will increase links by, by getting players to play for both teams for example and create that link between local clubs and schools. And the second policy that they brought in was a sporting future, a new strategy for an active nation. This policy was brought in 2015. Its aim was to engage people in activity and remove uh, barriers to participation. This targeted disadvantaged people, for example, disabled people, blind people. Um, in order to achieve this, they wanted to remove any barriers to participation. So an example of that could be blind football, they're bringing an initiative like this for people that don't have the ability to see, they might have lost their eyesight if they played football at a younger, when they were younger, they no, no longer can do it because of eyesight problems, well a scheme such as blind football allows them to do it. So after seeing all our evidence and our research, we've concluded that the evolution of sport has been on a positive rise since the 1960s. Although the Conservative Party we're really concerned in sport at this time. They, they ignored the Wolfram report if they didn't push sport any further. So despite that, we could see that in 1964, when the Labour Party came into power, they decided to show interest in the Wolfram report and decided to put government focus on sport and, and allow the, the, the country to recognise sport and recreation as a more important government focus. Right, link here with uh, what James and Connor said. Um, during the 1960s, uh, the Labour did kickstart the evolution of sport. However, back to the 1980s, um, the Conservatives came back in power. Um, and like we've said before, uh, Margaret Thatcher had no influence on sport because she just she had no ambition for it. However, thanks to the Wolf Under Report and the Sport Council, this is where we got um, our policies which um, created participation in sport. For example, Sport for All is getting millions and millions more people involved with participation and you've got your sport community that are improving all the facilities which which are still around today, which are getting improved to this very day. Um, you get your 800 sports halls, your new pictures, um, and like it is, including improving participation facilities and excellence. Throughout all the years, to this very day, it's uh, it's been shown that there's always been a positive rise through sports development, the evolution of it. As if you look back into 1964, when the Wolfenden Report was approved, to this very day, the amount of policies that have been made simply because that very one was approved is astonishing. Without that one report being, uh, report being approved, we wouldn't have any of this today, any of these sports halls being made, or anything on them lines. So due to Labour accepting that, 
it's made a positive impact throughout the history of sport and we wouldn't be where we are today without that. In addition to this, the Labour Party accepting the Wolfenden report just shows how much of a vital impact they've had throughout uh, the years. As without them, sport wouldn't be where it was because if you look back through everything we've gone through in this video, it shows that the Conservatives haven't really had a massive impact on it and they always turned away from it. Even to this very day, they haven't created a policy to help improve sport. They've only done it with the Coalition. So this shows that without the Labour, sport would not be where it was today.